Did you know that you could actually edit the audio content of your videos and enhance them in Cakewalk? Well, let me show you how you can actually do that. If you create content for YouTube or Facebook or Instagram and you do your video and all the editing and you want to enhance the audio part of it, maybe add some uh, expander or gate to remove background noise or add compression or EQ the voice or the sound and at the same time add a limiter so you can actually increase your volume as well. Well, you can do all that in Cakewalk. Once you have your video prepared and ready to go, open up Cakewalk, start an empty project. We go to File and say Import, Import Videos. Now I've got my previously created video on my desktop. Just going to select it. And now we have our video loaded in Cakewalk. Let's bring the video screen down for a moment. And here is our audio track of the video. By clicking here, we can enable to view the thumbnails of the video. But if you have a slow computer, you can always turn it off. It's not required. So let's have a listen. And we should see at the bottom here, partly our video. Here's a, a quick tip when you are editing your audio track in Cakewalk, especially if it's been recorded at a sort of reasonably low volume and you can't really see the, the tracks. Uh, there we go. You can close that and we are now, close the console, and we are now ready to edit the audio of the video. And of course, after we finish editing the audio, we can export it as a video file as well. Of course, we cannot really edit the video. It's not a video editor. We are only editing the audio part and we are mixing it back again with the video, with the updated audio into a new video file. So let me do a quick demonstration of what you can do. You have full capability of Cakewalk at your expense. But here are some of the things that I normally do. Let's go open up the console. Go into the master. And here, I'm just going to add a, a limiter effect. The one that's found in Cakewalk is boost 11. Here, I'm just going to put the level probably about minus 1 dB or thereabouts, which is fine. You don't want to be too loud. And then we can adjust the boost as we're playing the audio until we get, you know, a couple dB of uh, gain reduction and we can see it at the bottom here as well. Here's a, a quick tip when you are editing your audio track in Cakewalk, especially if it's been recorded at a sort of reasonably low volume and you can't really see the, the tracks, um, as you can see this track. Okay, let's turn it here. off. This one here, the, the drums room. We can hardly see the waveform there. Now we can expand that by moving our mouse just at the bottom there and then making it bigger. So we now can actually... So now we added some gain into the input, into the limiter, and then this will increase the volume so that our video's audio is loud enough so the listener doesn't have to turn their volume up. And it also stays at a reasonable level as the audio content uh, volume changes up and down. And I like to put the Booster 11 uh, on the master so that if I do add other tracks, like sound effects or any other audio, background music audio, if I wanted to add, then I'll know that on the master it's not going to go above 1.1 dB in this case. Now, although it's not necessary in this video that I'm just editing the audio of, because it's well recorded, if you have a noisy background when you are doing your videos, the other thing you can do, add an effects from Cakewalk, the Sonatus Gate. This will allow the audio content to be sort of uh, muted 
or turned down whenever there is no audio, especially if you are using uh, you know, talking content. And I normally try to have not too uh, deep for the uh, down, which I will experiment in a minute, and we can adjust the input level until we get a good audio without dropout, but at the same time remove any background uh, noise. As a rule of thumb, a threshold around minus 30 dB is really great if it's well recorded. Again, that depends on the audio content. And the depth about anywhere between minus 16 or 18 to minus 20 dB is a good depth to get rid of all the background noise. But in this case, I will not require it. I'm going to turn it off. Of course, you can go ahead and EQ the audio content as well. Have background music on another track and then sidechain it so that whenever there is conversation, talking on the original video, you can duck the music with the sidechain compression automatically. I do have a video on how to sidechain to create audio ducking effect. I will leave a link in the description as well. So you can watch that and hopefully that will help you out as well, adding background music to your screen presentations. And so once it's done, we go to File, Export, Video. Here we can select Windows Media Video, YouTube Publisher. MPEG Video is what I want to do. You can always change the encoding options. And also the audio mix down options. Same as when we were exporting our songs. I would like to call it the same name, edited. It reminds me that I have already done the editing of the audio and I can save. Let the audio mix down and then export the video and it's done. Here we have the two videos on my desktop. One before the audio editing, the other one already edited. Well, I hope this helped you out. Now you know that you can edit the audio content of your videos using Cakewalk. If this was helpful, make sure you give me the thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great time making music. Cheerio, guys.